And John Bon Jovi joins us now. Good morning. Good I mean, morning. when you see those clips, it's such an honest documentary. I mean, it really isn't a puff piece. No, no, all the blemishes are there. You know, you, you see your life flash before your eyes just before you pass away. Uh -huh. I don't think I'm dead yet. You're not. You're not. <laughs> Very I'll much alive. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, there, there is so much in it, John. Like, we've all loved your music for decades now and, and seen that sort of that journey that, as a band, you've been on and the way that whole music landscape has changed. Mm. I wonder how you found looking back and going through some of that old footage. It was emotional. You know, it was emotional. We, the band, got together maybe six months ago and saw a, a rough cut. It's the last time I, I watched it. Mm. And, and it was emotional. There was the highs, there was the lows. Because really, to have an honest to goodness career that lasts 40 years, mm -hmm. there has to be highs and lows. And you have to acknowledge both. Yeah, of course. And what were those moments like when you were sifting through all of the back catalogue? Because there were moments in the movie where you're literally going through take Cassettes sets. and notebooks. The, back in the day, and then you see this moment where you watch yourself going on stage all those years ago at the giant stadium. Right. And you talk and you're like, that kid's excited. It was very excited. Was so... There was a lot of caffeine in that system. <laughs> so... I was bouncing off the walls before I got onto the stage, yeah. But do you get that feeling back when you watch it? Is it a slight of out of body experience or do you go back? You know, I, I think it's the, it's the wisdom of having, you know, the, the experience and looking back on that kid. You've been asked throughout your career, what would you tell the younger you? Yeah. Slow down. <laughs> it's okay. Pace yourself. We're going to be here. You know, it, it all works out in the end. Yeah. There is a, one of the things that you, uh, you do broach and you show a lot of the work you have to put in with your voice mm. at the moment, John. Yeah. You've been very honest about some of the struggles that you are having with singing. And you've said, if you can't be the John Bon Jovi that you always have been, you're not going to do it. Where are you with the voice at the moment? How is it? You know, what people will see in the film is had been shot a year and two years ago. OK. Mm -hmm. So I'm much further along in the process now. Um, we have a new album that's coming out in June. I had no issues singing it. The successful surgery happened. Now it's all a part of the um, rehabilitation of a vocal cord. you got to remember that your vocal cords are as big as your thumbnail. Mm -hmm. They're this big. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and it's out of your control, really. And every time you sing, they work really, really hard. They I mean, work hard. The way you sing. You yeah. know, for 40 years, they've worked hard. He's, a, he's the original front man. Yeah. You no, know? No, no. Absolutely. But it's, um, it, it's coming along, thank you. And so, do you think there is a chance you'll tour again? Because in the documentary, you, you compare it to, to Tiger Woods, actually. Yeah, and, coming back to the Masters, and yeah. And being kind of 80% of... 100% of 80%. Exactly. Right. Do you think you That's will? Unacceptable. That's uh, I, unacceptable. My, my to hope you. is to. My hope is to. My intention is to. But if you're not at hundred percent, then I'm done. You know, it'd be that simple. But like I said, believe me, folks. Thank you very much. But I'm, I'm very far down the road of recovery at this okay. point. Okay. I'm not there yet. But for me, the bar is that two and a half hours a night, four nights a week. You know, I need. That's that's what we do. You know, if, if we're going to play, we play. It's amazing though when you think back to young John and what he got away with. And that, it just all came so naturally when you were singing and it, it wasn't something you worried about, I bet. I, yeah, I'd never had any issues, you know, physically. Um, so this was a surprise to me. Yeah. <laughs> uh, one, so of a lot of the stuff in the documentary that's so wonderful to look back, because as a kid of the 80s, yeah. as, as was Kat, yeah. the look, and particularly the hair, John. And what I loved was the idea that, that your dad was one of the first guys that helped with the styling of your hair. Well, he was a hairdresser. My I mean, dad was a hairdresser. But I, but, but the, it, it's but, not that he created that. But was, no, no, no. But if you think hair. about the impact that that look had, to have your old man doing that, I mean, I, do you ever sort of turn around and go, Dad, how did you let me go on stage looking like that? No. Uh, you know, but we, like I said, it was the way that every kid in the mall in America looked. Uh, you know, look, <laughs> I've had such a, a, a privileged life my baby pictures are public. Yeah. Yours are not. <laughs> you know? okay, some of them are. Believe me, some of them really We've got a baby are. picture of the two of you oh, from yes. 24 years ago. Cat Where is it? Oh, yeah, hold on. Look, 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 look. Have a look. Have you got this? Cat you do? Oh, good. I'm Let's really listening. See, you can. I think it's year 2000. Yeah, I don't They'll know. Was it 2000? Oh, good. There we go. There we go. There we go. Oh, there you go. And you're a baby too, though. There's a sign of you that's a baby as well. But I think that was one of the things about the documentary that struck me was you were also honest and and each person had their own truth tri yes that's what you said correct 
You know, we didn't want to have a, a vanity piece here. If we were going to tell this 40-year journey, it had to be everybody's truth. Because no matter what we talk about here today, we're all going to take this experience home differently. Yeah. You're going to, you know, decide what you got out of today's conversation. Mm. So everybody deserved to have their viewpoints heard. Mm -hmm. And you don't shy away from Richie leaving right. and the drama and the trauma that that all caused you. Sure. How was that to hear him talking about it as well, though? Because it, it's no holds barred, isn't it? No, no, no. He, he, he had some issues, you know, and, and it was unfortunate. Nobody expected it. There literally was a show that night, you know, as 20,000 people waiting in the, in the arena and he didn't show up. So it was heartbreaking. Um, and it's been 11 years, so we've obviously all had to move on from that. But um, there's nothing but love. You know, there was never any animos. He just, he had issues that he, you know, just had to confront. And did you watch the show together? We did watch the first three episodes together. I love that. I took it round at your house or his house? My house, yeah. And, and what did you discuss as you watched it? Look what happened. Yeah. Did you, no, but you did, it didn't, like, resurrect any emotions or anything? There, there was joy as really we sat together. It was just the two of us. I can't reiterate it enough. There is no animos. He, he, he's taken a path on his journey. Yeah. That, you know, being in a rock band is not a life sentence. Yeah. He was there for 30 of the 40 years. Yeah. I, you know, everything along the way is what got me to where I am today. Yeah. Could you see him coming back? Could you do some stuff? There's together? always an opportunity. He knows three quarters of the songs. <laughs> <laughs> but, but it's not that I'm looking for that or he's looking for that no. or anybody's looking for that. It'd be a wonderful reunion, though, for you guys and for the fans as well, of course. Like you keep saying, there's no animos, I swear to you. Yeah, yeah. I, one of the things, what is, there's so much in the documentary, uh, the, the mm. album cover, Slippy When Wet, and how you, that came about, but also yeah. living on a prayer you talk really honestly about the fact that you all, you guys wrote Living on a Prayer and you were like, yeah, it's all right. No, it was good, but you have to remember that the simplicity of writing a song that happens with an acoustic guitar and a stand-up piano, that bass line, which is so integral to the song and the drum beat, didn't come until we went to rehearsal. Writing the lyric and writing the chord changes was one thing, going in and working it up with the band is another. But that's the magic of writing a song, right? Because you can walk out of the studio from, from your perspective, going, we've got four songs, we've got a, a nice sort of vocal, but actually, yeah, it's gonna be okay, but then suddenly it comes to life when your bandmates put their ingredients in as well. That's that correct. Recipe. You know, it's the it's collective the we that makes the magic, absolutely. Yeah. And Bruce Springsteen features in the doc as he well. You talk, You talk really smartly about it where you say, when he was there, I had something to reach for. I could see it, I could be it. And your, your friends in real life, you go on off on car journeys. Sure, we're, we're old friends, but the E Street Band, there were seven members. Right. The Asbury Jukes, there were 10 members. Mm. This was 25 miles south of my childhood home. Mm. Chances are you went to a bar and one of them was gonna be there. <laughs> so it was like touching Santa Claus wherever you went, which yeah. made the impossible seem possible. Uh -huh. The English bands that we were brought up on, the Rolling Stones, the Beatles, Led Zeppelin, Queen, Elton John, those were bigger than, bigger than, bigger than life. Yes. But when you had the E Street Band and the Asbury Jukes 25 miles south and they were making records and singing songs about our backyard, yeah. it made the impossible seem possible. And they were 12 years older than I was, so they were always like big brothers. Yeah, they got advice for you. And now you, you actually take a car journey together. And... Yeah, it's an old, it's a story in the, in the film now that's getting a lot of pickup because I guess it makes sense. You know, you have the two of us driving around yeah. in Jersey People see it and they yeah. think, you know, it's George Washington and Thomas <laughs> Jefferson. You know? um, it's like you know, pictures of Bigfoot. It's Bigfoot, <laughs> yeah. And, 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 you know, we do do that often. Do you? Yeah, we do. Like about what? Five times a year, six times a year. So every couple of months we just go for a few hours no phones, no radio, no body. Yeah. So that we can just, you know, just catch chat. up. So there's no music. You're not arguing over who unless the music we're, is unless, unless we're playing each other a new song. Or right, OK. Or ah. But other than that, it's the radio's off because the time is catching up with friends. Precious. Talking of music, on the new album, there is a song that you've dedicated to your daughter. Because, uh, of course, you, you're, you're now... She may be the only one on the planet that hasn't heard it at this point. Oh, yes, because it's hasn't. for her wedding. I was too afraid to play it for her. No! So she's not heard it. When is she going to hear it? 
On the day. <laughs> on the wedding day. No, or oh. when the record comes out. Sometime oh. between now and then I will okay. get a backbone and play it for her. Isn't that funny that after all these years, you're still nervous <clears> about <throat> playing a song for your daughter for, that you've written for her wedding? I wrote a little song when she was five years old called I Got the Girl on an album called Crushed It Had It's My Life on it. Now she's 30 years old and getting married. You blink your eye and, and these oh, things happen. I know. And so there's a song called Kiss the Bride on the record that's quite moving for me as the dad. That yeah. sounds big. And of course, your son's getting married to... Two lovely... of my sons are getting married, but one of them, yes, Jake and Millie Bobby Brown. Lovely wow. Millie Bobby Brown. So you're welcoming her into the family. Yes, How are you feeling it's about years. sort of the, the, the growth there of the is family? Like, it's crazy time. You know, three weddings in a year. <laughs> that sounds <laughs> like, like a film title. Movie. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it is. And the album. Yeah, and the documentary's called Thank You, Good Night. This, this doesn't mean the no. end, does no, it? No, 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 no. Good. You know, when you think about it from my perspective, the last thing I say to an audience on any given night is, thank you. Thank you for giving me a couple of hours of your life. Mm. And, and I wish you well into the good night. Mm. Uh, one mm. of the things that we have here, of course, you'll know of Glastonbury, and there is the Legends slots on a Sunday night at Glastonbury. Bon Jovi, would they ever be keen to go Could down you? and do would Glastonbury? You? Would you do I've it? I've done about every other thing in this nation. You know, I mean, why, why not? Yes. Let's get Emily Evis on the phone. How many on the phone? We could sort this played, out before the end of the you know, show. Hyde Park and Wembley and everything else. I mean, Sure. If, if we go out on the road again, what's the big, you know, yeah. What's the big deal? Bon Jovi, no big deal. No and loads of people getting in touch, John Imogen. Seeing you guys at Wembley in 1995, the most surreal experience I've ever had. The whole stadium was rocking. Wendy, I love Bon Jovi. My room was covered in their posters. Corrine has been in touch. She said, my mum met John and the boys back in 1989. They signed her arm. Oh, she God. then got them tattooed. <laughs> Have you got the picture? There you go, look. <laughs> that's, that's Karina's mum's arm that was signed by all of Bon Jovi. Crazy she's had time, tattooed yeah. on. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. It's just amazing. Jay, I'm a massive fan of Bon Jovi. We would love it if Richie would come back. Is there any chance we haven't? We've already talked about that. Mm. Uh, Batsy, your music is medicine for the soul. Your songs open me up to seeing the beauty within the chaos of the world. So thank you. Brilliant. There's an amazing array of, of messages from different people that just Thank love you. the music. John. Yeah, it Thanks fascinates me and I'm, I'm grateful for all of it. Thank you. Thank you for coming on. Thank you and good night is out on the 26th of April, Disney Plus, and the album Forever is in June. Yes. Good Couldn't time. you continue good luck with the vocal rehab yes, and all that? Yes, and that's fingers good. Crossed, we'll Keep going, keep good. going. We want 100%. Yeah, too yep. right. John Bon Jovi. Thanks, guys. Uh, right.